Okay, so let's do a deeper dive into security groups because there's so much I haven't told you yet. So security groups, they're basically firewalls on EC2 instances and you know this already. They will regulate access to ports, the authorized IPs for IPv4 and IPv6. They will control the inbound network, so from anywhere else to the instance, but also the outbound network, so that means from the instant to other places. And basically everything will look under a nice table where you can see your different rules, maybe HTTP or SSH and a custom TCP rule, for example, and the description and the source and so on. So making sure your security groups are great and upstanding is very important to maintaining your security into your accounts. Now, if we look at a diagram, what does that look like? Well, basically, we can have our EC2 instance and it has one security group, but I've just separated logically the inbound rules and the outbound rules. And this is your computer and it has an IP and it's authorized on port 22. So what happens is that when you connect to your EC2 instance, the security group says, that's fine, your IP is authorized, go through. But if it's another computer and it's not authorized on port 22, so say you just restricted your security group role just to your IP, then it will be blocked by the security group and you can see it's red and the EC2 instance would actually never see that network request coming through. So the security group is really firewall outside your EC2 instance. Now, if you have WW, so just any IP, any port, and your instance wants to connect to it, by default, as I said, it is possible because all the outbound roles are open and working and this is what we would expect actually from a server, so that's great. So this is what you should remember as a diagram. Now, good to know. What do you need to know with security groups? Well, they can be attached to multiple instances, okay? There's not a one-to-one -one relationship between security group in and instances. And actually, an instance can have multiple security groups too. Security groups are locked down to your region slash VPC combination, okay? So if you switch to another region, you have to create a new security group. Or if you create another VPC, and we'll see what VPCs are in, in the le later lecture, well, you have to recreate the security groups. The, the security groups live outside the EC2. So as I said, if the traffic is blocked, the EC2 instance won't even see it, okay? It's not like an application running on EC2. It's really a firewall outside your EC2 instance. To be honest, and that's just an advice to you from developer to developer, but it's good to maintain one se separate security group just for SSH access. Usually SSH access is the most complicated thing and you really want to make sure that one is done correctly. So I usually separate my security group for SSH access separately. If your application is not accessible, so timeout, so we saw this in the last lecture, then it is a security group issue, okay? So if you try to connect to any port and your computer just hangs and waits and waits, that's probably a security group issue. But if you receive a connection refused error, okay, you actually get a, a response saying connection refused, then the security group actually worked, the traffic went through, and the application was errored or it wasn't launched or something like this. So this is what you would get if you get a connection refused. By default, all inbound traffic is blocked and all outbound traffic is authorized, okay? Now, there is a small advanced feature that I really, really like, and I think it's perfect if you start using load balancers, and we'll see this in the next lecture as well, which is how to reference security groups from other security groups. So let me explain things. So we have an EC2 instance, and it has a security group, what I call group number one. And the inbound rules is basically saying, I'm authorizing security group number one inbound and security group number two. So why would we even do this? Well, if we launch another EC2 instance and it has security group two attached to it, well, by using the security group run rule that we just set up, we basically allow our EC2 instance to go connect straight through on the port we decided onto our first EC2 instance. Similarly, if we have another EC2 instance with a security group one attached, well, we've also authorized this one to communicate straight back to our instances. And so regardless of the IP of our EC2 instances, because they have the right security group attached to them, they're able to communicate straight through to other instances. And that's awesome because it doesn't make you think about IPs all the time. And if you have another EC2 instance, maybe with security group number three attached to it, well, because group number three wasn't uh, authorized in the inbound roles of security group number one, then it's being denied and things don't work. So that's a bit of an advanced feature, uh, but we'll see it when we'll deal with load balancers because it's quite a common pattern. I just want you to know about it. Again, just remember this diagram. And by now, you should be really, really good at security groups and understand them correctly. So I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.